One idea very commonly misunderstood online is the idea of social construction. People assume that to say that something is socially constructed is to say that it isn't real, that it shouldn't exist, or that it has no effects on the world. Some people think that to say anything is socially constructed is to subscribe to some kind of conspiracy theory or to imply some dangerous relativism, but this is not the case. Here are some examples of things that are pretty much uncontroversially socially constructed. The state, money, law, borders, national cultures. What do all of these have in common? That they are constituted by social relations outside of which they cannot exist, that they developed historically, and that if these social relations were different, these things could exist in a completely different form, or not exist at all. Online, I've seen people asking things like, if gender is largely a social construct, why would someone identify as transgender? Or, how can you be racist if race is a social construct? Questions like these clearly misunderstand what claims of social construction imply. You probably wouldn't ask someone, if money is a social construct, why do you want to earn more money? In this video, I'm not going to argue that gender or race are social constructs, but merely try to explain such characterizations in a broad and hopefully uncontroversial way. The people asking the questions that I quoted seem to think that if something is socially constructed, then it is not real, or that it has no material effects on the world, but this is not the case. For example, Sally Haslinger, a professor of linguistics and philosophy, subscribes to what has been called critical realism. She believes that race and gender are social constructs, yet are still real, meaning truth-apt, that claims involving social construction can be true or false, natural, that social constructs are part of the causal order, and objective, meaning subject to empirical inquiry. This already disproves one of the misconceptions about this topic, that claims of social construction have to entail relativism. The rules of chess, for instance, are socially constructed, but in deciding the winner of a chess match, we can give an objective and non-relative answer. Money is a social construct, but we still can objectively answer the question, how much do potatoes currently cost at the local market? In fact, let's take a closer look at money. A very real thing, something that undoubtedly affects our lives and the things around us, and it is imbued with value. You can exchange it for things, you can use it to receive services. So in what sense is it a social construct? Well, in order, for example, for a dollar bill to have value and thus become money, it requires a set of social institutions, ones that print and circulate money, ones that legitimize it as a currency, and a market in which buyers and sellers acknowledge the dollar as having exchange value. This value is not material, but socially constructed. You can't find out how much a dollar bill is worth by cutting it open and looking inside, by examining the material it's made of, by viewing it through a microscope, or examining the combinations of atoms it has. Instead, you must look at the social relations that it depends on, and the social relations that it produces. And if you went back in time to a society with entirely different social relations, with no currency, your $100 bill would not be viewed as imbued with exchange value, but as a mostly useless piece of paper. Because of this, we can safely say that money is a social construct. Does it mean that money isn't real? No. If you type social construction into Google, the first suggestion that comes up is social construction of reality. This refers us to a book by Peter L. Berger and Thomas Luckman, The Social Construction of Reality. This has been given as an example of to what a ridiculous extent social construction claims have been taken. Could you believe it? The social construction of reality itself. However, you only have to read the introduction of the book to see exactly what questions they seek to answer. What is real? How is one to know? These are among the most ancient questions not only of philosophical inquiry proper, but of human thought as such. It is therefore important that we clarify at the beginning the sense in which we use these terms in the context of sociology, and that we immediately disclaim any pretension to the effect that sociology has an answer to these ancient philosophical preoccupations. It is our contention, then, that the sociology of knowledge must concern itself with whatever passes for knowledge in a society, regardless of the ultimate validity or invalidity by whatever criteria of such knowledge. In other words, we have to distinguish here between philosophical inquiries and sociological inquiries. Social construction, although it has philosophical implications and can be subject to philosophical inquiry, is a term that is mostly in use in sociology. When a philosopher inquires about reality, 
they will ask questions such as, what is the nature of reality? What constitutes reality? How, if at all, can we know about reality? On the other hand, a sociologist would ask questions such as, how is the word reality used in social situations? How are our ideas about reality socially formed? What are the social effects of our ideas about reality? We see then that although philosophical inquiries and sociological inquiries on the subject can often intersect, they are different approaches. Berger and Luckman in this book are not answering questions about what kind of claims about reality are valid or what the ultimate nature of reality is, but the social relevance of these concepts. This brings us to another distinction that should be pointed out. There is a difference between claims that the idea of something is socially constructed, which is called idea construction, and claims that something itself is socially constructed, which is called constitutive construction. In the case of money, it can be an example of both constitutive construction and idea construction. It is constitutively constructed in the sense that it cannot exist outside of social relations that validate it. It is also an example of idea construction because different people have different ideas about money, and these ideas affect how they act in social situations. For example, if you adopt the idea that money is the root of all evil, you are a lot less likely to set earning money as one of your life's prime goals. On the other hand, let's think of alcoholism. We could say, in a trivial sense and for simplicity's sake, that alcoholics themselves are not socially constructed. Whether you drink copious amounts of alcohol or not is a matter of fact even if you live alone in a forest outside of all social relations. However, the idea of an alcoholic, the categorization alcoholic, is undoubtedly socially constructed. For instance, it can involve the idea that alcoholism is a disease, or it can involve the idea that alcoholism is a moral failing. In this sense, the idea of alcoholism is socially constructed. But it is important to see that even idea construction can have real effects on the world. If the idea of alcoholism is constructed as a moral failing, we are more likely to blame the alcoholic and even punish them. But if we construct the idea as a disease, we are likely to treat the condition in an entirely different way. Social construction is part of the causal order, and it is not to be taken lightly, because even in cases of idea construction, such as the alcoholism example, the way those ideas are constructed change the way that people labeled under those constructions see themselves, and thereby how they act. At this point, the discussion gets more and more complicated, so I will stop there. But I suppose I should end by addressing the question of why social construction claims are so politicized. It's important to remember that Humans have a tendency to see the social relations of their time as default and natural. It is obvious to most of us now, I would hope, that for example, slave as a natural category is a social construct, but this was not always the case. Aristotle believed that slavery is natural, and that some people are simply born to be slaves. In the same way, as contingent as it may seem now, the rule of kings used to be justified by divine right. To say that a given social order is natural can be a political argument. Likewise, to claim the contrary can be political as well. Claims of social construction are often intended to make us avoid that mistake that past cultures have often made of assuming that our way of organizing things is the natural one. Ian Hacking distinguishes between several types of social construction attitudes. The minimum one is historical, that something is simply constituted socially and through history, with no value judgments being involved in the attitude. This is what a lot of historical research is meant to be like. Then there is the ironic kind. We know that something is socially constructed, but it is such an ingrained part of our world that we simply, in most cases, have to act as if it is natural. Then there's the reformist kind. Something is socially constructed and also bad, and although we cannot do away with it, we should try reforming it in order to make it less bad. Then there's the rebellious kind. Not only is something socially constructed, we would in fact be better off without it. If a person recognizes this, and then actively tries to change the world to get rid of the construct, this becomes a revolutionary attitude. We can see how it took a very long time for the category of natural slave to reach even the minimum kind of social construction claim, that is, historical. In the US, when the abolitionist movement started becoming popular, many people implicitly recognized that slavery is socially constructed, but made claims that abolishing it would have terrible effects on the economy and the social order. And so many saw even the reformist attitudes to slavery as dangerous. To say that a social phenomenon is natural can be a very powerful political argument and should be met with caution. 
Claims of social construction can help us avoid taking the social relations we live in for granted. And this is precisely why the people who most aggressively renounce all claims of social construction are often also those who politically support the status quo. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters, and I'm sorry in advance if I mispronounce any names. Timor Mar, Numu, Andrew Burns, Michael Doherty, D. Lang, Kenyon Appleby, Sean McIntyre, Isabel Abdullali, Robert Phillips, Adam Johns, Babak Golshahi, Tendies123, John Beatles, and Susie O. Thank you for watching.